well packaged at least. It's not banging around. All right, let's open this thing up. I assume that this is gonna be a prop. It has a nice hand nut. These things are cool. And feels like the same kind of plastic that Minn Kota and Motor Guide use. Nothing special. Three props, got a pin and the nut. Huh. Alright, so this, this is actually the foot control. Pretty cool. It's got nice rubbery feet. This is perfect. You can pull it off, put it, stow it away when you're done, and you don't have to worry about it getting uh, over weathered or, God forbid, stolen, right? Nice. It's got right, left, speed, and then you can accelerate forward here. It's got some heft to it, too. Feels like it's pretty well sealed. But it, only time will tell about that. Right. Hey, what the motor's got some heft to it. Initial quality is important, but long term durability and usability <laughs> is the ultimate tell. Wow, the head on this thing is massive. Look at this, comes with a big sealed breaker. Pretty cool, man. That thing is massive. This looks like something for a house. It's got a really nicely sealed entry for the wire at the very bottom. It's got a pressure, kind of the kind of wire entry, kind of a deck fitting kind of a thing. I'm a little bit disappointed that this plate is so big. I was hoping it would be a little smaller. The uh, Minn Kota and the uh, uh, Motor Guide are both, you know, probably uh, two-thirds to three-quarters of the size which that means I just have to build a really big um, mounting platform on my little boat and this thing is the transmission it must have some nice Teflon uh, guides in it or bushings because it's really very slippery this got a foot release right here which is real nice for popping it down we'll see how well that works and that's how it normally would sit on the deck. Holy crap. <laughs> it's almost as big as my boat. This is a, a wired remote for the uh, foot control. And it has a pretty hefty connector here. I'll show you in a minute. All right, so this is obviously a freshwater model. I'm gonna run my magnet around and see how much stainless steel and aluminum there is. And just looking at this case, which is my most concerning <laughs> element here, I imagined it would be a cast aluminum case, and it is. The stainless steel bolts are, are stainless steel and they're, they're good ones. I'm not getting a whole lot of magnetic force or anything. Uh, this little through pin is probably not that hot a stainless steel. It's definitely not mild steel. Seems like all the fasteners, all the screws and bolts are all decent stainless steel. And the shaft is aluminum. So that's good news. It's 48 inches. The 52 inch would have been too big. I should tell you what model this is. This is the Water Snake uh, foot control and it's a wired foot control. Uh, it's 54 pound thrust and uh, 12 volt. It's not the big 24, which I'm surprised the head is so big on that. This is the connector for the big heavy foot control deal here you can see it's got a big old tight connector here lots of pins that's the only thing that worries me but seem to be pretty good oh yeah you can really hear the vacuum pop when you pull that off so it should stay pretty clean I'll probably put a little bit of uh, white lithium grease in there and total weight I'm, I'm gonna say is about 20 pounds it's not super heavy, but it certainly isn't a lightweight item to put on the boat. Let's take it up to the boat and see how ridiculous it'll look <laughs> sitting on the bow. So, so, 
definitely a big, big item for such a small boat. I'm gonna have to build some kind of platform starting at the bow uh, triangle and hopefully angling like this. Right, so one of the things that I was concerned about when I saw this giant foot control is that it wouldn't fit in my bow uh, uh, hatch. And luckily it fits right in there and I'll be able to stow it there pretty easily without any problems. In fact, I'm probably gonna come up with a way to have it wired in all the time. So if I'm gonna give this thing some criticism, I would say that it's a bit clunky. This head just seems kind of big for a 12 volt trolling motor. Um, it doesn't really feel cheap, uh, but it looks a little clunky. Uh, everything's just a little bigger than I expected it to be. This uh, base housing is um, a little wider, a little bigger. If this thing runs good and stays running good for a few years, it'll be worth it. Because the price point for this unit is about half, actually less than half, uh, than either the Minn Kota or the Motor Guide. So, we'll see. But the only design flaw I see right now is that this foot release is there to release the motor so that you can deploy it. And to bring the motor back in, you have to also press the foot, which means that two hands and a foot to bring this thing back on board, which can get a little dicey on the bow of a boat. So that, is, I think, is a, a design flaw. The, uh, the other thing is that, as far as I can tell right now, uh, this thing will slide right off that bracket without push, pushing that foot pedal down. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe after I've got it installed, there's an adjustment. But as of right now, foot pedal mechanism uh, looks a little bit cheesy. So we'll see when it's in action. All right, now I gotta clean up this mess and get ready to mount that other one. Uh, I'll remind you that I actually did a review of a Newport, I think it's a 62 pound thrust, 12 volt uh, motor. Uh, and I did that almost a year ago and you'll find it on the Engineered Angler YouTube channel. And I'll be doing a follow up review on that trolling motor in about a month because it'll be a year uh, that I hung it on that boat and left it there. So it's been in the elements, in the water, and it's got about 200 hours of runtime, so it's a good time to take a really close look at how it's faring and before I actually hang it on my conversion boat. Check out my tons of videos on my YouTube channel, The Engineered Angler. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, you got something out of this. Mm -hmm.